Hi everyone, I am Celine Talabaza, the CEO of Noble Panacea. Noble Panacea is a very innovative skincare brand, but it's also a place where decades of research and dedication meet modernity and the promise of future generations. Noble Panacea is creating a platform for women to empower other women. That's why I'm very pleased to be able to support this digital event today, which I'm sure will be insightful and inspiring. We are very happy and proud to uh, partner with Girl Up, an organization that reflects the heart of our brand mission, empowering women through education. Noble Panacea mission is to continue the legacy of mentorship established by our founder, Sir Fraser Stoddard, who was awarded the Nobel Prize of Chemistry in 2016. So we hope to inspire the next generation of young women to pursue scientific endeavors to create positive changes. Women in science is actually essential for the discovery of groundbreaking innovations. Sir Fraser himself learned the necessity of inclusion and diversity of all minds throughout the development of his successful career as a chemist. Now, this is gonna be your favorite part. We are thrilled to welcome our brand ambassador, Jodie Comer, who embodies the Noble Panacea Women and inspires us with her authenticity, her talent, and the dedication she puts into her craft. So Judy, thank you so much for your genuine support and your interest that um, in being here today with Girl Up. To all the ladies watching, please enjoy this session and keep up the good work. Well, thank you so much, Celine. Jody, it's wonderful to have you. Um, I'm Melissa Kilby. I am the executive director of Girl Up, and I'm loving our topic for today. You know, overcoming challenges is something that I think every single one of us can relate to. Um, it has been a year and a time full of challenges. I think we are ready to put some of these challenges behind us and start getting to these goals that we have. Um, I've been so proud, and I know all of us here at Girl Up have been so proud um, of our Girl Up leaders that they have overcome these challenges, continue to stood together, and really excited, Jody, to hear from you, um, you know, your advice, but also we're going to get to talk with um, some of our girl leaders from around the world um, to hear about how they have actually tackled these challenges. Um, we're so thrilled to, to do this event today with our partners at Noble Panacea who are supporting our girl leaders around the world um, and just really excited to kick this conversation off. So Jody, welcome, thank you so much. Tell us a little bit about you know, how you came to be on a Girl Up Girl Talk about overcoming challenges. Yes, I mean, well, I, I definitely have Noble Panacea um, to thank for that. They made me aware of the Girl Up community and campaign and I just feel incredibly lucky to be involved in this support that they're you know um providing you guys this year and I, I feel like you hit the nail on the head like I feel like I am going to learn so much more than I could ever um give these girls I think the work that you guys do as a collective is is so inspiring and um yeah, I'm ready to learn, I'm, and I will. I will provide all I can, but I'm I ultimately I'm I'm ready to learn. That's great. You and me both. Mm -hmm. so, well, let's, have our, let's have our girl up leaders join us. Um, mm -hmm. We have Ines from France, Helena from Norway, Bethel from the United Kingdom, and Kavisha from the United States. Welcome, ladies. And um, Ines, would you please uh, introduce yourself to the group and kick us off? For sure. So uh, my name is Ines. I'm 17 and I live in uh, Paris. I used to be a teen advisor and I used to have a girl at club in my high school. So that's how I discovered the organization. Wonderful. Helena. Hi, my name is Helena. I am from Norway, but I'm currently living in Paris and I am part of the Parisian girl up team as the event planner. And I'm pleased to be here today. Great. And Bethel. Hi, I'm Bethel. I also used to be a girl up teen advisor. 
I had a club in my school and I'm starting a London coalition. Fabulous. And Kavisha, would you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Kavisha. I'm from California and I currently serve as a team leader on the um, Pacific Grow Up Coast Regional Team. And I'm really excited to be here. So I'm loving this global conversation that we are going to have today. I think that overcoming challenges is certainly universal and global. So why don't we go ahead and get into it? Um, Bethel, I'm going to come to you first because I, I just I know you've got this. Um, how do you overcome, how did you overcome challenges to be where you are today? Yeah, so one of the main ways I've overcome challenges to be where I am is by not comparing my current situation to other people's success. And when I say this, I mean, when you look at social media, you see people achieving a lot, you see people doing so well, and it's so easy to get caught up in that and beat yourself down for it, for not doing as well as them. But in reality, we don't know the behind the scenes. We don't know what they've taken to get where they are. We don't know the failures that they've gone through to get where they are. We don't know the time that they've put in. So for, for me to then compare myself to somebody else's best um, would only push me down instead of going up. And another way is by holding myself accountable and having somebody else holding me accountable, whether it's a close friend, a mentor, a teacher, anyone you trust, because a lot of the time when you're down, it's so hard to see things from other people's perspectives. But if you have somebody else encouraging you and giving you their perspective, that just encourages you to keep going and do better. So Jody, I know we have a few years on, on these ladies, maybe not too many. <laughs> yes. I know that's a that's a piece of advice I wish I had gotten a long time ago. Does that resonate with you? Yeah, absolutely. I really resonate with that. And I think because there is also a tendency of when you see other people's success as your own downfalls, you become completely distracted by that as opposed to focusing on yourself. Um, and I think for me personally, I think self-belief accounts for a lot and perseverance um especially coming from a working class background I think there is definitely a notion that you are going to have to work that much harder to be successful um you know people continuously being surprised by your capabilities um so I think going into a room or into a space and knowing that you have you know all the confidence the qualifications or expertise whatever it may be um and I guess being your your own biggest champion I think believing in yourself I think is the biggest thing yeah absolutely mm -hmm. Kavisha um tell us a little bit about how you have overcome challenges you know how did you get to to be here today so I wanted to share something I learned um during my first dance performance I was about seven years old and I made a mistake on stage and I had a wardrobe malfunction. It was super awful, right? Um, so I had two options. I could either try to fix it while everybody was watching me or I could recompose and pick up where the music was still playing and perform like I knew that I could. Um, so this sort of example has translated into my life where life was just hitting really hard sometimes and um, it sort of derailed the timeline that I had set for myself and I really needed to take the time for myself to heal and just recompose. So to this day, my dance instructor, um, you know, she reminds me that sometimes mistakes happen and it's really okay. And you just flow back into the groove of things when you can and you keep moving forward with grace. I love that so much. I have images of some of like the most epic falls that I've ever had on stage. <laughs> and you pick up and you pretend it didn't happen and you keep going but recomposing having time to recompose that's really powerful I love that um Helena would you share a little bit about how you overcome challenges how are you here today with us absolutely so for me it really comes down to what Jody just talked about about believing in yourself I come from a political background I've been really active in politics in Norway also in city council as a super young woman uh, it's so important to believe in yourself and to just claim the place that you know you deserve because no one's really going to hand it to you. 
So um, yeah, in politics and in most other fields, it's just important to believe in yourself and the fact that other people may not hand you these places doesn't mean that you don't deserve them. Um, and yeah, so I think it's this trust in my own value that my voice is as valuable as the voice of like an old man that has been in politics his entire life. Uh, I think it's a trust in this value that has really helped me overcome sort of the challenges and the setbacks and has led me to where I am today. That's great. That's great. And already probably have overcome so much to be in, in politics at such a young age. I'm, I'm very proud to know you. Inez, um, what would you add to this about, you know, another way that we can overcome challenges and how that's worked for you? Well, I love all the girls' answers, and I can really relate to what Bethel said. And I think that, yeah, uh, not being afraid to ask help has been a way to overcome challenges. Uh, it's one thing to be independent, but I think it's really important to authorize yourself to say help uh, to your friends, mm -hmm. to your family. And that's something I had to learn, actually, to feel like, um, like I still had legitimacy. And like I was not less deserving uh, if I asked for help to people. I remember when I applied to become an advisor, I, my English was not so good. And at first I wanted to practice it on my own, but then I asked my English teachers some help and it became much more efficient, but also it made happy moments. So that would be my piece of advice. Yeah. Well, everyone watching, this is really good advice. These are things that I know I work on really daily. Um, asking for help, not comparing myself, believing in myself, all of these things. And Jody, just to flip this around a little bit, you know, we're talking to the young women of Girl Up who are mm -hmm. you know, in these challenges and they're overcoming things right now, but what advice do you wish that you would have given to your younger self? You know, what's something that you wish you would have known earlier on, especially when challenges maybe seemed like they were almost too big to surmount? Oh my gosh. I think when I was younger, I took everything personally. Um, and I think now that I'm a little bit older and, you know, being in the acting profession and, and being that little bit older, I, I realized that I took every no, every, um, yeah, every no is something, something personal that I'd done wrong or whether it be there are just so many factors as to why you may not get a job. You know, there are, there are so many elements as to that, but I always took it very personally. Um, and I wish I could tell my younger self that it, it it's nothing to do with me. You know, there are so many factors too, especially the acting world and, and so many opinions and um, don't take the whole weight of it on your shoulders. Um, I think would have been my advice and be patient like stop wanting everything right this second right now um yeah yeah that would, that's what it would be yeah, that's great advice so Bethel I know that you are in university now um if you could go back and tell your younger younger self something that you wish you would have known when you were tackling some of your biggest challenges what would you share to probably not give up at the first sign of failure and to understand that success doesn't happen overnight because mm. the, literally the most successful people, it wasn't the steadiest journey. Like everybody fails, everybody encounters obstacles, but I wish I had used those obstacles to, to build me up and to keep going and just to be more resilient and use every situation as a learning lesson and use it to motivate me instead of push me down. Yeah, that's great advice. I know for me too, when I feel the most passionate about something, I'm, I'm probably the least likely to, to give up at sign of failure. You know, in our Girl Up community, our passions and our activism is really what brings this, this movement together and this community together. So I'd love to hear from each of you, you know, what, what issue, what aspect of equality are you most passionate about and how does that push you forward in, in tough times? And um, Inez, I would love for you to start us off. Yeah, sure. So, well, obviously feminism is an issue that really passionate me. And I would say that a specific part of feminism is, uh, feminism, sorry, is uh, representation. 
And the fact that representation matters, and of course it has uh, to link with uh, your job, Jodie Connor. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I've realized how influenced I've been by both the lack or the presence of diversity in the movies, in the books uh, I used to consume, and how much having a role model is important to build yourself. So I think that's uh, nowadays a big challenge is to make sure that everyone has a role to models. Mm -hmm. Jodie, does that does that resonate? How does that feel with you, representation? Absolutely. I mean, I've been so incredibly lucky over the years um, to work on a lot of productions that are female driven. So I feel very fortunate that that was my experience quite early on. Um, and I do think we we have a lot to do. And, and, and I'm going to bring this up because I think I can do a lot more. Um, you know, I wanted to ask you guys a question of being someone who has a relatively big platform, I've always kind of used that for a work purpose as it's something I, I'm always trying to kind of keep private life private and use it as work. But I, I'm really uncomfortable with that feeling now. And I want to do more on my social media. And I wanted to ask you guys how you enjoy you know advocating and bringing awareness to the issues that are most important to you and do you guys have any advice or pointers for me and in, in which ways I can um, be better and this could be a conversation you know way down, along the line um, in this kind of relationship but um, yeah I feel like I could do a lot more. Kavisha, do you want to um, maybe respond to Jody's question and also share with us, you know, some of the issues that you're most passionate about? Maybe you can tie it all together. Sure, yeah. Um, well, I think for me, it was, you know, growing up, it was really hard because I didn't have a role model to look up to. And, you know, there's a lack of representation um, of women that look like me. And so over the years, I've realized that even generationally fighting for equality is a privilege and a lot of women in certain cultures don't have that didn't have that in the past growing up like I know for a fact with my ancestors um, I immigrated from India and so they didn't have that possibility and I have a lot more freedom um, than they had in the past I think keeping that at the forefront that like this journey for gender equity is truly a generational change and it where we are now is very much different than where we are in the past and that it will continue to grow is really important to keep in mind um, especially when you know we sort of get bogged down and we feel like we're not doing enough and we're not at the place that we should be at but it's like it's just it takes time and it takes mm -hmm. Kavisha, in addition to sort of generational change, are there specific aspects of e equity and equality that really light you up that you feel extra passionate about? Yes, I think health is so important, um, especially my major at university right now, um, but health is so quintessential to everybody's well-being, um, especially reproductive health. I think you know, there's so many disparities around the world um, with attacks and having access to certain products um, and even just like stigma around experiencing something that is so natural for women to experience I think um, making progress in that realm is going to be really important to see more just a better quality of life for women all around the world yeah definitely I agree and I'm excited for girl up to do even more and talk more about how health intersects with all of this so um, hopefully you'll see that passion and issue come to light even further. Helena, how does gender equality, feminism, you know, how does all of this come together for you? And is there a specific aspect of equity that, that you feel incredibly passionate about? For me, I feel very passionate about sort of female liberation from the set uh, gender roles in our society. And the freedom from this comes from uh, uh, education. Uh, and I think this is most of the, one of the most important tools that we can use for um, 
to create equal opportunities for everyone. And within this also sexual education, and this ties in with what Kirita just said about feminine health, but also sort of the liberation from this shame that society makes us feel because of our bodies or our sexuality. Mm -hmm. So for me, like uh, sexual education and also queer sexual education is really, really important. Yeah. There, there can be gender equality if we're overly defining who gets to be in what gender and who gets to be equal. So I think that there's a there's an interesting um, evolution of just even what we mean when we say gender equality and gender equity. So thank you for bringing that up, um, Bethel. Add to this, you know, is there an aspect of equality that we haven't covered yet that that's really sort of igniting you and and pushing your work forward around our work together at Girl Up? I think mine is similar to what everybody else mentioned. So mine is um, gender equality and human rights in general, mm -hmm. and more, speci more specifically access to education in developing countries for girls, because a lot of the time um, when there's kids, they will, they're more likely to send the boys to school instead of the girls. So it's just about having that equality and the access to education. And I just, I also just don't think it's right for people to be treated differently or discriminated against simply because of factors that they cannot control or simply because of the way they were born. So I just wanna be the voice and continue my activism for those that can't speak out for themselves. Yeah, yeah. Jody, this is, I mean, I, I love talking to our Girl Up leaders because I, I'm just like, yes, and that, and that, and, and this, and that, you know, what, what if this resonates with you as you think about how you can use your platform, as you think about your own mm -hmm. and sort of what you are most passionate about, you know, what are the things that come through for you as your person? Because I think that passion is really how we get through challenges, right? Is tapping into that? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, things that are important to me are um, mental health awareness. Um, I feel like there is still quite a stigma surrounding mental health, mental health, even though I feel like in the past couple of years, it's, you know, it, it's come along heaps and bounds. Um, but I think trying to erase that stigma and raise awareness, um, and also for the LGBTQ community, um, um, that's hugely important to me, even more so after playing a character like Villanelle and seeing how important it is to have authentic representation on screen. Um, I think it's fundamental um, and yeah, like so I have these feelings, but I'm, I've always just seen social media as, as something else that I really want to break away from and I don't want it to be self-serving, you know, and that's what I am inspired so much by you girls is the way in which um, you use your voice and you, you use your platform and you have such a sense of agency that, um, that I want and I'm going to work on. <laughs> well, Jodi, I want to stay with you for that on that for a minute, mm -hmm. you know, with partners like Noble Panacea, who are just really helping us to support girl leaders, which, you know, we're, we're having this amazing conversation with for incredible young leaders. Why do you think it's so important that we do provide a platform today, right now for young leaders? Oh my gosh. Well, first off, this was not, um, you know, I wasn't, in, it wasn't available to me, uh, this kind of support and this exposure when we were younger. Um, and I think young people now are so socially aware um, which is so inspiring. And I, I think for me, why it is so important is because like I'm, I'm 28 soon and still to this day, as a woman walking into a room, I have this feeling of being lucky to be there and I hate it. And, um, and I'm still trying to shake that off. And I think it's so important that we encourage girls, um, and allow them to command their own space and believe in themselves. And I think it's so wonderful that um, you are enabling this. It's, you know, to such young ages. Um, yeah, that is why I think it's, it's, it's important. Yeah, I agree. I definitely didn't have any, any kind of platform like this either and wish so much looking back that I did, but luckily we have this now. We get to yes. learn. <laughs> yes. We get to learn from our young leaders the lessons that we didn't learn 
when we were young and that we're learning today as adults. So um, mm -hmm. Helena, I want to ask you, you know, how, how do you think that you are underestimated as a young leader? You know, what's a way that that you feel like you are constantly surprising people or or people aren't maybe taking you seriously or valuing you? And and because because we really want to make sure that you are valued and that you aren't underestimated. But how is that how has that happened for you? I feel like I'm constantly uh, underestimated by um, my knowledge of things. Like people seem so surprised when I know everything there is to know about this case and politics or when I just speak my mind freely and people are like, whoa, all of this is inside your mind. And I'm like, well, of course it is. And I think like, <laughs> this is one of the most important things that uh, Girl Up uh, does, which like Girl Up shows women in powerful position, young, young girls uh, doing all of these things and really like uh, telling their stories, showing that they are real people doing all of this. And this has inspired me so much. And I think it, uh, it's really changing people's lives. Yeah, that's great. Inez, you know, what is one of the things that you're most proud of that you've done with your platform? You know, being a young leader and being potentially underestimated at times, but you have had this platform with Girl Up. How, how have you used it? How, how do you feel proud of that? Well, um, first, I just want to say that I, I think what's really interesting with Girl Up is that it doesn't give us a voice because we, we already have a voice, but what it gives us is a loudspeaker. And as girls, and especially as young girls, that is so important. I, when I started my club, I was 15, and I remember that I was a part of other organizations, but all I would do was uh, selling hot dogs, where I wanted to be a part of the conversation and to, to think and to act. And I really like the fact that Girl, Girl Up gives you responsibility, no matter your age. So, um, yeah, I was able, of course, to do this kind of events. We organized um, a projection, a movie projection, to earn some money for Girl Up. But we were also able to debate, to invite people to debate with us, which is uh, so like it's so important on an individual level. It really built myself, but also on a collective level. And I, I met wonderful people to Yeah, Kavisha, um, you, you choose one. Tell me how either a time you've been underestimated or why you value the platform that you have today as a young leader. Definitely. I love this platform so much. Um, I think it's all about empowerment. And um, I spoke earlier about, you know, growing up and not really having a role model to look up to. And when I joined Girl Up, I was like Inez, about 15 or 16 years old at my high school. And um, it really gave me the space to grow into that representative that I needed for myself. So I, I was able to grow into that role model and I'm, I still am continuing to grow into somebody that I can look up to for myself and that I know um, girls younger than me or even you know friends, peers that I have, that I'm happy that they can look to me for certain advice. Um, empowerment, 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 so important. And I'm very grateful for the space that I have right now with my Pacific Coast Regional team because like myself, we're a group of you know like-minded individuals who want to make change in our region, um, and it's not only a team that we work together and you know we're passionate about the same issues, but it's also grown into a friendship, and you know we affirm each other on days that we don't feel good, and we inspire each other and respect each other, and I think it's just really beautiful to be able to grow at such a young age with um, other girls that are around my age and just, you know, it, it makes everything okay. It really does. Yeah, it is helpful to have the community, right? I think that's, that was one of my biggest takeaways from this last year, right? Of just so many challenges and being isolated and going through, I think so many different emotions and reckonings and understanding how poverty and equity and justice, like, they affect you when a global pandemic happens. They affect you when you you sort of see this constant stream of news that doesn't equal the vision that you have, you know, for the world that we live in. Having a community is the only way that I've certainly have, you know, made it through, <laughs> I think, the challenges of the past year. So I, I really, that really resonates with me. And 
Bethel, just a, a, a thought from you on this, you know, what do you see as the power of your generation? You know, when we think about young leaders and how you all are leading differently, what do you see as the potential? Yeah, so I think our generation is extremely resilient, bold and confident when it comes to speaking out about out about issues that we're passionate about. And that's something that inspires me and continues to inspire me about our generation because we don't just talk the talk, we walk the walk as well. So if we want to make a change, we will make the change and make sure it's done. So it just makes me very hopeful and optimistic for the future and that a sustainable and tangible change and development will be made. Yes. <laughs> Amen. I mean, I think like, I, really, I agree with you and every fiber of my being, like, that's why I'm so privileged to, to do this work. And Jody, I know you're just getting to know Girl Up and, and you've met these four incredible young leaders who are so representative of the community and young mm -hmm. women and, and young people that I meet on a regular basis. If you could share with them sort of any words of encouragement, any sort of pleas from an older generation, you know, just any like any sort of response or, or reaction that could help keep them motivated to keep going, what would you share? I think they need no encouragement. <laughs> that is why it's so Fair. incredible. <laughs> like, honestly, like my heart is so full being on here. Um, like I said, when I started, I feel like I have so much to learn from you girls. Like you all have such a clear sense of self um, and are so driven. And, and like, like you said, Bethel, it's like when you know something is fundamentally wrong, you speak up and you act on it. There is no thought. There is no, oh, you know, should I do this? Or but if I do this, is this speaking out in the wrong way? It's you follow your heart. And I think when you do that, you you can't go wrong. I mean, I'm just so inspired um, by you all. So all all I could say was was to keep doing what you're doing, and I'm I'm you know I'm behind you and beside you 100. percent Absolutely. I agree. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so Inez, I know we also had a question that we wanted to ask back uh, to Jody. So Inez, I'm going to kick it over to you. Yes, so um, the question we wanted to ask you is, well, obviously we all have the, those bad days where we just don't feel like it. And what do you do in those case? What do you say to yourself? Oh gosh, like, I think this is definitely still a practice. I don't think I have this sussed out yet. One thing I try to do is, um, is to try and be grateful. I usually find if I'm upset about a situation or, you know, I feel like there's been a shortcoming or something hasn't gone the way I hoped or wanted to, I try and bring it back to what I have and what I'm grateful for um, about life and about the situation in itself. And two, something else I do just as, it's not exactly words, but to uplift me is music. <laughs> I feel like a good way to get rid of any of that kind of stagnant energy or feelings, you've got to dance it out. I think <laughs> even if it's in your bedroom, anywhere, um, something that makes you feel good, I think. Um, yeah, I think it's not necessarily a word, but yeah, those would be my kind of go-to, I guess, coping mechanisms. Yeah. Anybody else dance it out when they need to? <laughs> You've got to. Yeah, you got to. Leave your body. Just <laughs> yes. have, that, have that exit, right? Yeah. Um, well, I just, I want to thank you all so much for this conversation. I think it's it's such a a great way to kick off the year together. Um, and uh, Jody, thank you so much for joining um, and just sharing a little bit. Um, I know you're getting to know Girl Up and we're excited to do more with you. And I wanna say thank you also to Noble Panacea who brought us together, um, but also for your partnership of, uh, with Girl Up and your support of these incredible young leaders who do lead differently. Um, they do what is right and they don't question it. And we all have a lot to learn um, from each of you and also from our movement. Um, you know, we have a lot of challenges ahead 
you know, this, this girl talk is about overcoming challenges and, and the challenges still lay before us. But, um, you know, I agree with you all that there is a new way that we're seeing this younger generation approach challenges. And it does give me hope and optimism. Um, and I'm in so incredibly grateful to work in partnership with you all to try to move um, these challenges forward so that we can realize a more equal, a more equitable, and a more just world for women, um, for people, for humans. <laughs> I know Beth, you were talking about human rights and, and that's really what this is about. So I hope those of you who uh, have joined us will, will stick in this partnership with us as we move through the challenges of the year ahead and the work still to be done. There's a lot to celebrate. Um, there's a lot to be hopeful about, and um, here's to uh, another great year of impact and working together um, for equity, for equality, and for justice. Thank you all so much for joining.